Hello, everyone. It's me, your brother, Tim. Um, it's so good uh, to be able to share with you tonight uh, a quick word of encouragement. Um, that is the goal of mine every time I get a chance to share is to encourage your hearts. Uh, there's so many believers and there's so many people out today in our world today that are really struggling. Uh, they struggle in life, not just their walk with God, not just their relationship with God, but they're struggling in life. And I really believe that if there's one thing that we need right now in our world is we need to hear from God. And encouraging word from the Bible will go a long way. All right. And so I'm not going to waste that much time. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I actually have a quick word. I'm not going to be before you long. All right. So I'll probably be uh, maybe about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I'll be done after that. But hopefully uh, this will bless you. Last week, um, if you saw uh, the last podcast, um, I talked about the importance of putting God first, um, especially. I mean, it's the third month of the year. It's already March, the beginning of the month. But you look at uh, where we are. Um, it wasn't that long ago before we embarked in a brand new year and we're already in March, um, but it's still the beginning. Uh, we have uh, nine more months to go. Of course, we have 12 months in a year. And so it's very important that we start the year outright. We want to get off on a good foot. And so what better way than to begin with prayer? Uh, when I say begin with prayer, I'm talking about starting your day with prayer, starting your year with prayer, starting your work week with prayer, putting God first, getting into the habit of putting God first. I really believe that a lot of the chaos um, in the world, um, but let's take it on a personal level, a lot of the chaos in our minds, uh, a lot of us today, um, we're looking for direction. A lot of us don't know where to turn. And so, like I said, whenever you begin to put God first, he has a way of putting everything in its proper order, uh, putting everything in the right priority. And so this is why I do this. This is why we go to church. This is why we need to get around other believers who are going in the same direction that we're going in. This is why it's so important that you pray, that you read your Bible, that you attend services, that you worship, that you uh, fast, that you forgive, that you really begin to incorporate all these spiritual disciplines in your life so that life will be more clear, so that life will be more enjoyable. Because guess what? Everybody knows in life we do have storms. Every day is not going to be sunshine. Every day is not going to be a bed of roses. And we all know that. But I really believe that whenever you begin to put God first, we're able to take whatever God wants to teach us in every season. And if we really want to learn our lessons in life, if we really want to learn what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us, it's so important that we get in tune with the Holy Spirit. And how do we do that? We got to learn how to put God first. All right. And so when you if you have your Bibles, um, please, if you don't have your Bibles, you can listen to me. But it's always good when you have a Bible that way you can read along with me. All right. And so even when this broadcast is done later on tonight, there's nothing wrong with having a little personal Bible study of your own just so that we can get the most out of the text as we possibly can. So I'm going to start really from Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse one. All right. Uh, this is the famous faith chapter. All right. And it talks about a lot of the, the patriarchs, those who have gone before us who really have gone through tests and these tests really involve the trying of their faith. OK, and so faith is very important. All right. And I want to really uh, emphasize that tonight. Some of us, the reason why we don't put God first is because we don't really believe our faith is in the wrong things. We don't really believe in the God of the Bible. 
We don't really trust God because we don't know God. Scripture says he, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's so important that we get into it. I'm going to start at right at verse one. I'm going to be reading from the ESV translation and it reads as such. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. And so here we see the origin of the, the universe. We see the origin of the world. We understand that everything that was made, it was made by a creator. OK, and in this particular uh, chapter, it talks about that. We as believers, no, we don't believe in evolution. We don't believe in the Big Bang Theory. We don't just believe in, oh, yeah, we, we believe in a higher power. No, we know that our higher power is God. And we believe that because of what his son, Jesus Christ, has done, we can have a personal relationship with this God. And that's what Christianity is all about. And so here, Verse three says, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. All right. I love that. And I want to repeat that. You know why? Because nowadays there's so much talk about the universe. And you got you got people out there. They're talking about the universe. And it's like they're really trying to make the universe out to be a person. Like, oh, you don't want to disrespect the universe. Oh, this happened because that's just the way the universe orchestrated it. And this type of belief, it doesn't come from God. It doesn't come from what the Bible teaches. And what grieves me, and I really believe that it grieves the heart of God, is when Christians or people who call themselves Christians talk this way. If you call yourself a Christian, you have to believe in the God of the Bible. You, you have to believe that God... Not only does he have a name, but he has names, all right, with the S at the end, all right? There's many names to God, all right, because he's just that big, and he, he performs different tasks. He does different things, and he has a way of revealing himself over time, and that's what he did throughout history. So there were times when the Israelites needed God to be a healer, and so he showed up as Jehovah Rapha. There were certain times when uh, the, the Israelites, they needed provision, all right? And so he showed up to be the Lord, their provider, all right? There were certain times when they didn't think that they qualified to be the people of God. So he revealed himself as the Lord, their righteousness. And so God, he shows up at the right time to do the things that only he can do. And he actually reveals himself and he and he chooses to reveal himself, reveal himself by the titles that he has, the names that he has. And he does it through the experiences of life. All right. And so it's very important that we understand that. And I'm going to go even further in about a minute that the universe was created by the word of God. Do you see that? So that what is seen what we see every single day, the blue sky, the birds, the grass, was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. All right. So just to give you a little bit of history, um, Abel and Cain, they were the first children of Adam and Eve. Um, there is a tragic history, of course, because everybody who knows um, the history about this. And when we read the Bible, we read that what happened. Abel was actually murdered by his own brother, Cain. And that was actually the very first murder that was recorded in the Bible. And what a shame that the first murder was actually domestic. All right. A man killed his own brother. All right. And, and so, yeah, the world has always been 
tragic. Sin has always been horrendous. OK, I really believe a lot of this stuff that we see today, it didn't just start today. And yes, we do know that Christ is coming back. And the Bible does say that the hearts of men are going to grow colder. And we understand that because of what Scripture says. But sin has always been bad. All right. <laughs> sin was never good. All right. And really, it goes back even to Lucifer's rebellion. All right. And so by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And so Enoch had such a faith in God that the Lord was so pleased with it that he just took him as he was. Enoch didn't even have to die. All right. Everybody else in the in the scriptures, um, they, they actually had to die. I believe Elijah was actually taken up into heaven with a, with a fiery chariot. All right. But the Bible clearly says that Enoch, because of his level of faith, God just snatched him up. All right. And he actually walked with God until he was no more. I love how that sounds. I really believe that there is a, a there is something that th there is a level of relationship that God is calling us to that. I really believe. No, we may not be like Enoch, but we can walk with the Lord in such a way that it's no more us. It's all him. And I believe that he is calling us to that type of relationship. So faith by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And when he was not and he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And this is verse six. And this is a key verse. All right. We're talking about putting God first. We're talking about the importance of seeking the Lord. And without faith, this is all for my God seekers out there. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God. All right. This is for us. This is for those you're not satisfied with just coming to church every Sunday. You're not satisfied with just that weekly Bible study. Nothing wrong with that. But this, these are for the people who are hungering and you're thirsting after righteousness. These are for the people who really have a heart after God. These are the people that you're not going to be a victim of your circumstances. These are for the people that know that there must be more. All right. And I really believe that God is calling you all by name. He says it right here for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists. That's number one. You have to believe that the God of the Bible does exist. All right. He is not just a man upstairs. He is not just a higher power. OK, those are all like very weak, worldly descriptions of our God. You can know him on a personal level. You can know him because the Bible reveals aspects about his nature, about his holiness, about the love that he has. How would we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life if we didn't read that in John 3 16. So the Bible reveals certain things about the character of God, about the very nature of God. It reveals the heart of God. And so it's very necessary that you read your Bible and not just read your Bible on your own, that you get around a community of believers in your local church so that you can read the Bible together. God, when he ascended on high, when Christ ascended, he gave gifts unto men. And so some, yes, they have the gift of a pastor. Some have the gift of a teacher. Some have a gift of an evangelist. Some do the work of an apostle. We have the fivefold ministry. So this is all for the equipping of the body of Christ. It is not the will of God that you go through your life confused, not knowing who you are, and worse than that, not knowing who he is. So that's very important. So it says how we have to believe that, first of all, he does exist, that there is a God. All right. I don't want to hear about anyone trying to make a monkey out of me. As a believer in Christ, we don't teach evolution. 
We don't believe evolution. We believe in creation. We believe in the God of the Bible. We believe that everything that was written, that God gave it to us, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, written by men, yes, but still inspired by the Spirit of God for our learning, for our instruction, so that we will be prepared and so that we can be the people that God wants us to be. These are words to live by. That is the word of God. So we must believe that God exists and that what? And I like this part. And that he rewards those who seek him. That's very important. I want you to understand that anytime you begin to lay your life down for God, he will never leave you hanging. He will never forsake you. It is impossible to outgive God. And there are certain scriptures where it talks about how people, a lot of times people refer this to money or, no, it's not just money, it's anything. It's your time. It's your body. It's how much you give. It's how much you sacrifice. And I am a living witness that it is impossible to outgive God. I don't care if you're sowing, if you're giving in the church. I don't care if you're taking your time and you're using it to help someone else. If you're giving what you have to those who are less fortunate, it's impossible to outgive God. Even when you give your very life for the gospel, you hear me, it is impossible to outgive God. You got to understand that by his very nature, he is a giver. By God's very nature, he is good. He is just a good, good father that takes good, good care of his children. And so I want you to know that when you begin to put God first, whether you're waking up in the morning or you're getting up at 5 a.m. for prayer and you got your Bible open, and even though you're tired and you're yawning every 30 seconds and you're so tired and every now and then you may doze off. I want you to understand that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Even when you got to forgive those who hurt you and talk bad about you. But you know that this is the Christian way. And we know that our Savior, Jesus Christ, he forgave to the very end. Even when he was dying on the cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I want you to understand that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you forgive others who sinned against you, your father, this is a promise from the word, your father in heaven will also forgive you of your sin. Like I said, you can't outgive God. Whatever you give, God's going to give back to you exponentially. But it comes with a faith in him. It comes with a faith that is rooted in who God is. Going back to verse six. He is a rewarder of those who seek him. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Some of you, you already know it. You've been hearing it from when you were a child growing up in the church. Those of you who have not gone to church, maybe this whole faith thing is new to you. That's a good verse to memorize. I want you to know that God is for you. The word of God is for you. I want you to know that this Christian walk, it is for you. A lot of times we think of people who we see that seem to be so good or we think of our pastor and we should. You know, we, we thank God for pastors. We thank God for church leaders. We thank God for church leadership, those who teach Bible study, for those who are living the life. But I want you to understand that it is not good enough. It is not God's best for you to put other people on a pedestal. God wants you to see yourself as someone who belongs to him. He wants you to see yourself as someone who has the grace given, given by him so that you can accomplish whatever needs to be done in your life. Whatever God is calling you to, know that he has given you the grace to do it because if he didn't give you the grace to do it, he wouldn't call you to it because that wouldn't be fair. Why would God call you 
to do something that he doesn't first equip you to do it. Amen. God, he called you by name. He knows all about you. He knew you before you knew yourself. Let's go even further than that. Before you came to the world, God knew who you were. He knew exactly what you would look like. He already knew exactly where you were going to be born. He knew exactly who your parents were going to be. He knew everything about you. Let's go even further. God knew the mistakes that you were going to make. God knew about your failures. He knew that every now and then you get hung up and every now and then you begin to get in your feelings and you think that you're not good enough. You think that you're not smart enough and you and you begin to see all those good qualities in other people. But you see yourself as way down here, not smart enough, not educated. You never finished school. You dropped out. You don't make enough money. You don't have the six figure salary. You drive a hoopty. All right. Some of you, you go from relationship to relationship. Some of you, you've been trying to get married and now you're in your 40s and you're still not married. And I'm not saying that to pick on anybody, but I want you to know that God has a habit of choosing those who are least qualified. Hello? He chooses those, and I talked about this a, a couple months ago. He chooses those who seem to be weak. He chooses those who are really not qualified according to the world standards because God wants to show himself strong in them, and he wants to show yourself, himself strong in you. But you have to accept this. You have to own it. You have to receive it. You have to know that, Lord, I'm looking to live for you. Lord, everything, every promise, Lord, that is made in this book, I really believe it is for me. It's for me. And I'm going to talk more about that right now. So we understand that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I got one more verse. I told you I was almost done. I'm making it nice and sweet tonight. Short, very short and sweet. I don't want you to be distracted by the time, you know, because sometimes, you know, <laughs> we can do everything else. We can go watch a three hour movie. All right. I'm a big Marvel fan. I watch a little bit of DC every now and then. All right. Batman, the movie came out. I may go see that. But some of us will sit up in a movie theater for three hours and we won't doze off one second because we don't want to miss anything. There have been times when I went to the movies, man, and I would refuse to go to the bathroom because I didn't want to miss not one second. And you better believe when the movie was over, I almost ran to the bathroom. But I didn't, I didn't care because I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to miss seeing Spider-Man or Wolverine or I didn't want to miss seeing Batman. How is it that as soon as we get home and we say, you know what? I think I want to get into my Bible before I go to bed. And sometimes we do that. We get out the shower and say, you know what? Okay, it's about 10 o'clock. I think I want to give this last half hour to the Lord, settle myself, open my Bible, begin to read. And I tell you, not even five minutes later, you're knocked out. You're snoring already. <laughs> and then you get up. And you can't believe that now it's past midnight. Oh, I better go to bed. I got to get up early in the morning. And then sometimes we'll do the same thing the next night. And we'll do the same thing the next night. And we'll do the same thing the following week. And we put off going after God. We put off those spiritual disciplines. We put off those necessary things that we need for spiritual growth because we think that life is better and we can enjoy and indulge and eat and watch and, and do all these, these things that don't really help us spiritually, that don't have any eternal value. And I'm here to tell you today that if you're not living for Jesus, then you're not living. You're just breathing. You're just existing. If you're not taking the time out to pray, if you're not taking the time out to get to know who he is, I'm going to be bold enough to say that you don't even know who you are. 
And it has nothing to do with your occupation. Don't get me. And this is where the confusion comes in. Because we think we look at people's occupations and what they do. And we think, oh, well, OK, Michael Jordan is a great basketball player. Some of us, we believe that he's arguably the greatest of all time. But do you know that the Bible says, and I'm not putting down Michael Jordan. I don't know this man personally. I don't know what he believes in. But the Bible says, what profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? See, the things that God looks at, we don't look at those things. And the very things that we look at, God don't even care about that. God doesn't take enjoyment with athletes and shooting basketball. And it doesn't mean that, okay, for people who have that platform, that they can't give God glory. I really believe that's very important, and they should. But I don't think that God is watching the Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure he knows who's going to win. <laughs> See, but God, he, he's holy. His ways are not our, like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. He, he's at a whole nother level that we can't even attain to without Jesus. And so if you want to get to know him, that means that you have to begin to rise higher. That means that you have to step up to the plate. That means that you have to consider your ways and be willing to make necessary changes so that you can see God. So that you can see his handiwork in your life. Because sometimes we get discouraged because we don't see God and we don't hear God. We don't recognize his voice. I talked about this last week. God's been knocking on the door of some of our hearts for quite some time. But you know what we do? We avoid him like the plague. We treat him like he's a Jehovah's Witness. And he's the living God. He was gracious enough to wake you up this morning. He was good enough to provide your every needs. He was good enough. Because we got this thing that, oh, you know, I work for a living. And I work 48 hours or 40 hours a week. And, you know, I deserve what I, what I earn and I earn my paycheck. But if God didn't give you the strength to work, you wouldn't have anything. If God didn't give you the intelligence to put together those meetings, then you couldn't do anything. You wouldn't have a job. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. It comes from him. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 7. Remember you, your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. This is from the, the writer of Hebrews. Some people believe it's Paul. Some people don't. Some people believe that uh, Apollos, he was a very powerful preacher at that time. Some people believe that he wrote the book of Hebrews. I'm more um, leaning towards Paul as the author of Hebrews. But we do know that it is the word of God and it's inspired by God. Remember your leaders, those who speak to you, the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and do what? And imitate their faith. Verse 8. You know why? And this is key. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I'm going to stop right there. See, this is all a part of seeking God. This is all a part of knowing that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know why it's all connected? You have to understand that the same God who was around in the Old Testament, the same God who delivered the Israelites out of the Red Sea when Pharaoh and his army was right after them, hot on their trail, looking to capture them, bring them back into bondage, the same God who allowed Pharaoh and his army to drown in the Red Sea. The same God who delivered Daniel from the mouth of the lion. The same God who delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
from the fiery furnace. The same God who existed back then, who called Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God that was around back then is here today. And you can know him for yourself. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I want you to understand that the same miracles that Jesus performed, if you believe miracles can happen in your life, the same God who started revival back in the book of Acts, when revival, when the church first began, and the Spirit of God fell upon the church, and souls were being saved daily, that same God exists today. And revival starts inside of you. And God can use you to be a witness on your job. God can use you to be a witness at your school. God can use you to be a witness in your family. He can use you to speak the truth in your church. But you got to believe. You got to believe that he is God. You got to believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You got to believe that he's not going to leave you the same way. If you encounter him, he will change you. He'll change your thinking. He'll change your heart. He'll lift, your, your, lift those burdens. He'll destroy that yoke. Depression has got to go. Darkness has got to flee. He will heal you. He will deliver you and he will make you whole. But you got to believe that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, if you don't have faith, this is all rhetoric to you. If you don't have faith, the words in this book, they're just words and it's just another book. But I want you to know that God exists. He is still God, regardless of your belief. And he doesn't cease to be God just because we live in a land of unbelief. He's still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He's the same God. I hope that was a blessing to you. See, I promised I wasn't going to be before you long. If you believe that, I want to pray for you. Wherever you are right now, if you're driving, definitely don't close your eyes. <laughs> All right, but listen to me. But if you're home in your living room, if you're in your bedroom, if you're in your car and your car is parked, you can pray along with me and close your eyes. Father, I thank you for those who are listening, who are watching. I pray, Lord, that they would know you in a new way. I pray, Lord, that this year, in 2022, that they will see you in a new way. That they will see you in a way that they would have never seen you before. I pray, Lord, that you will make all things new in their life. I pray, oh God, that you will remove heavy burdens. I pray, Lord, that they will know that your love can drown out fear. Your love can drown out depression. Your love can drown out the darkness. Because when the light is on, darkness has got to go. And you are light. And when you come in, darkness cannot remain. Father, I thank you right now, Lord that you're calling everyone by name. You know who they are. I pray, Lord, that they will experience a new beginning. I pray that they will dare to believe. I pray they will put all of their faith in you. I pray they will have a desire to put you first, that they won't put their loved ones first, they won't put their job first, and they won't put themselves first. But they will put you first. And seek the God who made them. Father, we thank you.
that none of this would be possible without Jesus. And we thank you for the awesome sacrifice that he made when he died for us. And we're so grateful. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, for a miracle to take place. We know that salvation is a miracle. Conversion is a miracle. And there are some people that are listening to me right now. They're in need of a miracle. I don't know what they're going through, but you know what they're going through. Somebody, Lord, they need a miracle in their finances. They may need a miracle in their bodies. They may need a miracle for someone who, who and there may be someone in their family, a loved one who has been diagnosed with cancer, diagnosed with heart disease. I pray, Lord, that they will know that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you are not a man that you should lie. And if you said it in your word, you're saying it right now. You can heal. You can deliver and you can set free. Let them put all their faith in you. Work a miracle. Blow their minds. Do a new thing. All because you are God and all because you are good. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed along with me, I want you to know that God is here. God is with you right now. And your life will not be the same. Invite him into your heart. Open up your Bible. Allow him to come in so that he can reveal himself as God and that he can do the impossible in your life. Amen. Amen. I see you next week. God bless.